Hello, I'm Tara Brabazon and I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University and welcome to Vlog 53, delivering a stellar seminar. This vlog today comes via request from Michelle who sent me a fantastic email with a whole series of requests for vlogs that I'll try to deliver as quickly as I can for you Michelle. But Michelle was particularly interested in techniques and strategies to deliver a small internal seminar within a school, within a discipline area or within a university. And as many of you are now preparing for your milestone presentations, this seemed a pretty timely request. So Michelle, good on you. So today is trying to make this small seminar experience better for you and also the milestone experience a little bit more predictable for you. Michelle also wanted me to talk about the feedback and how to handle feedback at the conclusion of that seminar and again that is a terrific suggestion. It's a big suggestion so the following vlog Michelle will take on the feedback issue. But Michelle and everyone else keep sending in these fantastic requests because I wouldn't have thought of delivering this vlog, but Michelle did, so good on you. So Michelle's suggestion about the specialness of a small seminar is absolutely brilliant, particularly considering that the bulk of oral communication presentations that you deliver as a PhD student or as an early career researcher are this type of event and indeed the small seminar requires a very different set of techniques and skills compared to say delivering an undergraduate lecture or a conference presentation or indeed a keynote address it is different but why it is so important I think is so much of the success in contemporary academic life right now is based on your capacity to disseminate and to deliver your research to an array of audiences. A large subset of the seminars that you will deliver during your PhD or research masters will be of this type and yes the milestones are really the most frequent way in which you communicate your research to your colleagues. So let's talk about how to approach these small seminars and I've come up with Tara's again quick tips, Tara's 10 quick tips to investigate and produce an outstanding seminar. Tip one is an important one, probably the most important one and that is think about the audience for your seminar. When you're doing these internal seminars, you have a very well-educated audience and they are schooled in the nuances of your discipline or your paradigm. So you can take a lot more for granted than you would say in a public lecture or a public seminar. But these are your colleagues, so it is important that you show them what you can do. Ask the question, and this is important, ask the question why they should be interested in your research. Why should your colleagues be interested in your research? And don't start writing the seminar until you can answer that question. So why would people who are in your discipline find your research fascinating? What I want you to do is answer that question and that actually becomes the introduction for the seminar itself. Two, frame your topic and write a rough outline. Perhaps more than any other mode or form of oral communication, the small seminar requires a very careful organization of ideas. You cannot cover everything, and indeed, you can't cover most of your research. So specify overtly what you will be talking about, and specify overtly what you won't be talking about. That's quite an important technique. So actually state, I am discussing this area and these other areas are outside of my interest at this time. Also remember that time matters a great deal. Most of these presentations are between 20 minutes and 40 minutes in length. So therefore, because the time is so compressed, you need to write a speech rather than extemporize off PowerPoint slides, which is a poor speaking technique anyway. So do not read your proposal. Instead, what I want you to do is riff off your proposal, present the best edited highlights of your research of the proposal, and that is what you deliver. Organize well, organize carefully. 
but it is also important that you time your talk. This is the most important tip really today because great content that you're not allowed to deliver because you mistimed your talk to be 40 minutes, 50 minutes, 60 minutes, that's wasted content and you've wasted the opportunity to convey your fantastic research. Because remember, the audience wants to hear about your research and explain the value of your scholarship. A key problem that I always find emerging from inexperienced speakers, and indeed a few experienced speakers, is a complete mistiming of the talk. So what they do is they focus on the preliminary material, the literature review, the material that got them into the research, and then present their original research in the final couple of minutes. And I'm in so many seminars where this happens, so we've been so busy talking about the background that in the final two minutes they deliver the innovative work, and the whole audience is like going, really? I'm really interested in that, and I got two minutes on it. So make sure you put your innovative, important content at the start of the talk and time it carefully. Three, remember that an effective writer and an effective speaker are two different entities. It is important that when you write your talk, which is of course a script, that it is engaging. It must be also deliverable. So you need to write something that you can actually deliver to an audience. That's the point of writing a speech. So yes, you will have to practice the talk out loud so you become very comfortable with the oral communication modality of your research. Now, you need to learn your talk and always remember, speak slowly. You can never speak too slowly. <laughs> also please note that a great delivery is based upon hours upon hours upon hours of practice and rehearsal. So many presentations, lectures, seminars in universities are absolutely dreadful. And the reason they're dreadful is because the men and women have not put in the time to demonstrate and rehearse what they're going to be doing. And I've always found that incredibly disrespectful for the audience. I put in the hundreds of hours that are necessary to do a great presentation because I respect your time. I respect the time of my audience, I respect the money that they've spent to get to that talk. So when you respect the audience, you therefore put the time in to enact a great delivery for them. Four, use PowerPoint judiciously. Never, ever, ever read what is on the screen. If you follow that rule, you'll enact a good speech regardless, I think. But when you use PowerPoint for short presentations in particular, please use it as a form of visual referencing. So if you're referring to a key scholar or a key study, a key lab-based environment, then put a PowerPoint slide up of that article. Very important so the audience can see the area in which you are referring. Also remember that the PowerPoints are not the seminar. So the seminar should be able to be delivered completely without any PowerPoint. So if the PowerPoint system breaks down, your talk should be deliverable and understandable without any technology. Think about that. Five, in a small seminar, focus on a single idea. The worst seminars do too much. They cover far too much material. Remember I talked about the importance of organizing your content. So what you need to do is have one clear idea about why this seminar and indeed why your research exists. Why does this research exist? And then find a strategy to show why that's of value to the audience that you're speaking to. So be able to answer for me in one sentence, what is the topic of this seminar? what is the topic of the seminar, and then the second sentence is, why should the audience be interested in the seminar? Those two sentences are your introduction. Six, check out the room and check out the technology. I've always, throughout my entire life, arrived at venues about an hour before I'm delivering a speech, and there are reasons for that. 
I need to feel comfortable and confident in the environment. So I need you in this small seminar to feel comfortable, to feel confident. So check out the technology. Make sure the lighting in the room is suitable. Make sure the temperature of the room is suitable for you and for the audience. And this is an important tip. When I was a younger academic, I used to get rushed very much into delivering. Do not start your seminar until everything you need to be in place is in place. Don't let anyone rush you to delivery. Make sure everything is working and then start. Your confidence, your comfort are a priority. Seven, talk with your supervisors, the postgraduate coordinator or the seminar organizer about what happens before during and after the seminar. It's very important to me, and this enhances your comfort once more, that you have an understanding about the shape of this seminar, what is going to occur. So for example, in a milestone, you will deliver the presentation, you will take questions, and then you'll leave the room for a period of time while people talk about your progress, and then you will return. But make sure you know precisely the shape of what is going to be expected of you in that seminar, and that will reduce stress. Eight, yes, this is important. Know the audience is on your side and talk with them rather than to them. You see, a great seminar, all great oral communication actually, builds a relationship with an audience. So remember, you are not reading a paper. You are maintaining eye contact. You are building a relationship. You are delivering your research orally rather than through print. If you're just reading something, then give them the piece of paper and let them read it themselves. This is oral communication. Different skills are required. I would also stop questions being asked throughout the talk and state that I will take questions at the end of this presentation so that your flow is not disrupted and your timing is in place. Now I also know Michelle asked a key question about the role of the supervisor in these seminars and that's really important Michelle, great question. Really the supervisor in these small sessions, particularly milestones, have no real role. We're there to support you. I sit in the corner like Yoko Ono in the Let It Be sessions and I take notes for my students. Very rarely do I intervene. In fact, in a confirmation of candidature, I've only intervened from one of my students once where an evaluator just simply went rogue and we were kind and calm and tried to <laughs> control her behavior a little bit. We failed. So at a certain point, about 15 minutes in, I just uh, fix that problem. So supervisors, you shouldn't hear from us at all, but if bad stuff happens, we will intervene. Okay. Nine, important one, relax with the question time. Have a piece of paper in front of you and write down the questions. This is important. It's a stressful experience for you. Don't think you're going to remember the questions. You won't remember the questions. So get a piece of paper in front of you and write them down and then you're able to refer to them. No stress. If you don't know the answer, just thank the questioner, note it down and say for further research, I'll remember that question. Thank you. Also, very often, unfortunately, students get questions about the whole project eight months in. <laughs> So at a confirmation of candidature, you will get a question about, right, well, tell us about the shape of your research. State, this is a confirmation of candidature, I've presented a proposal, I welcome a discussion about my data when I have it. So control the question time. And again, if questions get a bit bonkers, that's when your supervisor will intervene. Okay, so if anything a bit offensive comes, the supervisor is straight there. Ten. Know that you're going to be nervous and find strategies to manage those nerves. You see, speaking in public is challenging. It is frightening for a lot of people. So you just got to know that it is and find strategies to manage it. So the best way to manage stress is to prepare to practice and rehearse. The reason I can do speeches all over the world to thousands upon thousands of people without any nerves is because I spent hundreds of hours practicing and rehearsing. So anything that could go wrong has gone wrong and I know I can manage it. I need you to feel the same way. Breathe deeply, 
speak slowly and control your space, control your time. Because team, speaking well in public is an incredibly valuable skill. We all learn to speak in public by speaking in public. It is an experiential ideology. So do take these opportunities in your candidature to speak in these smaller venues. And remember, when you speak well, it is a fantastic skill because oral communication and academic life is very, very rare. You will be noticed in the academic community if you can deliver speeches effectively with high quality content. Never hesitate to be entertaining because a great academic communicator is a pretty rare bird. So no talk is perfect. Please don't think, oh, you know, what if I can't deliver a perfect speech? No one does. The rule always with speeches, guys, is aim to just survive it survive the seminar and then through your career aim to improve. So build up the links that you have in academic life. Start with these local seminars and that will then lead to national and international opportunities. So Michelle, tremendous suggestion. Thank you so much. We'll do feedback next week. But Michelle, I wouldn't have thought of this session without you. So again, if anybody has other suggestions they'd like me to have a go at, please send me an email. But Michelle, well done. And as always, I wish you love, light and peace. Tea out.